Hey everyone, it's Dion with Not On Cravings and I'm back with another video. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make the crumble for the strawberry crunch cake. Now, a lot of people are always asking me, Dion, how do you make your crumble for your strawberry crunch cake? And you know, it's no big secret. I go ahead and tell them. I'm not one of those people who act like I can't tell you nothing. You know, if you need help, I'll give you advice. And so now a lot of people be wondering how to make this, but they be confused because it's so many different ways that you can do it. Folks are undecided, but today I'm going to show you the most simplest way for you to do it. To make the crumble, it is only a few things you need. You need two bowls, a box of vanilla pudding mix, a box of strawberry gelatin, a stick of butter, two one fourth cups of flour, and two forks. Okay, and so now let's get started. First things first, make sure you preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Okay, and make sure your butter is at room temperature. And now to get started on making the crumble, in the two bowls, you are going to need to put four tablespoons or half a stick of butter in each bowl. So you would divide it in half. Oops. And put four tablespoons in each bowl. Okay, next, after dividing the butter into the bowls, you will take your strawberry gelatin and your vanilla pudding mix, and you will both add them to each individual bowl. So, pour in the strawberry gelatin. Pour in the vanilla pudding mix. And then you will both put one fourth cup of flour into each bowl. So there goes that cup. And then one fourth cup into that bowl. And so now what you would do next is after everything is, is in the bowls, you would take the forks and you would use the forks to start mixing everything together. You know, it's almost like the process of when you are baking and uh, you are combining butter into the flour. It's the same process as that. You just got to take your time until it all mixes together and it's going to become a very grainy texture once everything is combined. Yeah. So as you can see how everything is starting to come together right there, you just keep doing it until it almost appears like it's sand. And you and you would do this for both the vanilla and the strawberry. And so now let me go ahead and skip to the end and show you how it's supposed to look. Okay, and so now this is the finished product of how it's supposed to look. You see how it has a real grainy and like sand like texture. That's exactly what you want. Now, show you how the strawberry look. The strawberry isn't going to look exactly like the vanilla one. The strawberry mixture will be a little bit more clumpy, but it'll be about the same texture texture though okay bring that into the light some more so that you can see sorry focus was going a little haywire but that's better now let me show you one more time for the vanilla okay and so now next you would then take a sheet tray lined with parchment paper or wax paper you can even use Aluminum foil. I would probably spray a little bit of nonstick cooking spray on the aluminum foil first But other than than that parchment paper will be the best thing to use So now you take the sheet tray you take the mixtures and you just Dump them on You know make sure you get every little bit every little bit counts <laughs> So 
take them, dump them on out. Okay, and so now what you would do is you would just mix it up, spread it around, and flatten it out. It's not good to try to just bake it in one big clump because that's not going to work good. Especially when it comes time to when you have to process it. And so now if you ever want more than this amount, all you have to do is just double the ingredient amounts. So you would do one whole stick in each bowl two boxes of each gelatin and pudding mix and half a cup of flour okay so now that's all beat and spread out okay so next you place it into your oven for six to eight minutes Anything longer than that, and the crumble will instantly start burning. Like, you will be able to smell it if you keep it in there for more than eight minutes. Okay? So now close the oven and let it bake for exactly six to eight minutes. Okay, and so now, after it's done baking, this is how it should look. You see how it's done browned up some. And so now, after you take it out the oven, sit it on the cooling rack, and let it cool off for at least 30 minutes to an hour. Okay, and then after you cool it off, a tip, after you let it cool off to room, room temperature, I would then sit it in the fridge for at least another 30 minutes, and that'll really make the butters and everything else in it really stiffen up, because when you process it, you know, it's, it's going to warm up again, and so it's going to seem kind of like, like it has moisture to it, but if you let it sit in the fridge and let it completely stiffen and dry out, it will process even better. Okay, guys, and now that the crumble is out of the fridge, let me show you what I meant by you should let it sit in the fridge. You see how easy that it crumbles up now? Well, that's because by sitting it in the fridge, you allow the butters to fully stiffen and dry up. So that way, when you do cause friction, especially from uh, processing it, it won't be a... Uh, kind of moist and mushy as it's uh, colliding against each other breaking up okay then now I'm just having been fun let's get to processing it now okay and so now let's go ahead and put it into the processor I have my small processor here I need to invest in the big one soon Oops. so go ahead and start breaking off chunks of it and put it in And so now, I would say this, you can use a processor or a blender or a Nutribullet or Ninja, whichever one you have, just make sure that you do not overload it. Because if you do, you will run the chances of messing up your blender or your processor. And so now, that should be enough in there. Oops, let me break that up just a little bit more. Okay. Close it up and Okay, now let's take this off and take a look at it. Oh yeah. Now those are some fine crumbs. Crumble, I mean. <laughs> take that and just dump it into our bowl. And you repeat the same process until it's all used up. Okay, everyone, and there you have it. Perfect strawberry crumble 
for any cake, dip strawberries, cupcakes, whatever you want to use it for. Now me, usually whenever I make a cake with it, I like to make my crumble a day ahead of time because it's easier to work with when it's dry. And so I'll make it a day ahead of time. I will let it sit in the fridge and let it completely dry out because as you can see right now, if you can see how greasy my glove is, it's still moist. I mean, you could go ahead and use it now if you want to, but I like to go ahead and, and let mine dry out all the way before I use it for anything. Okay. Ooh, that looks so good. I just want to eat, eat some of it right now. Excuse me real quick. Just joking. <laughs> now, on a side note, this recipe is very universal. You can use it to make any flavor crumble that you want, whether it's the strawberry crunch or cookies and cream or orange flavor crunch, lemon, <laughs> peach, pineapple, whatever flavor gelatin you want to use, it will work with this recipe. Okay, guys, well, that's it for, to for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoy this channel, give it a big thumbs up, like this video, subscribe, and stay tuned for more. My next video, I will be showing you how to make the strawberry crunch cake. Thank you all, and have a good day.